In this video, we're going to be reviewing um, changing the standard truss into a truss that um, I guess resembles this building that one of the students have selected to use as a precedent. Um, so this building uses steel tubes uh, to do, or, or I guess to, to form the structure of the building. Um, we're going to go over how to create the, that truss pattern and I guess a couple of the different modeling techniques that can be used to uh, build the building. So as you can see with this truss, I've already modified it a little bit, so I'll show you how to do that. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select one of these existing trusses, and we're going to go up to the top here, and we're going to click Edit Family. Um, the first thing I'm going to do when I get in here, I'm going to type VG on the keyboard to bring in the visibility and graphics, and we want to show the dimensions. And this will allow us to see the parameters that are set up by the truss. Um, so we're going to delete all of these internal lines. Um, and then we're going to create a reference plane down the middle. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is more just for my organizational purposes, but it allows you to have some customization as you uh, work through the project and if the project changes in size or scale. So I added a dimension between the reference line and the bottom cord of the truss, and we're gonna add a label um, to that dimension. So we're just gonna click the dimension, we're gonna click up here, create parameter. And we're gonna call this um, uh, middle cord height. And what this will allow us to do is, it'll allow us to change this middle cord height parameter. I'm just gonna make this even three for now. It allows us to change this middle cord height parameter within the Revit project and we don't have to edit the family every time. So now I'm just gonna create a couple web elements. So if we look at that photo, we, see, we can see in some of the images that there's a middle post. So we're gonna add that middle post and then we also see that there is a, I guess, a, a web member that goes across there. So we're going to we're going to draw these through webs, and we're going to draw a web there. We're going to lock it, and we're going to draw a web there, and we're going to lock that. I'm just going to make sure it's locked to this line. Yeah, it looks like it is. So let's load that back in. I'm not going to save this right now um, because I already saved the other one. But now you can see that all of these are the same type of truss. So what we're going to do now is we want to change a couple parameters. So looking at um, this truss, First thing we want to do is understand the width. Um, so right now, um, let's go to a floor plan. Uh, it looks like they added a middle cord in some spots. I'm not 100% sure why, um, but we're we're not going to focus on modeling these trusses on an angle. Um, it kind of pushes the limits of the software a little bit, but for now we're just gonna uh, focus on kind of modeling them as straight pieces. Uh, so I'm just gonna move this picture out of the way here so we can kind of see what's going on. Okay, I guess that's fair in terms of the size, so this truss member should be at, looks like the truss member is probably every few pieces. So I'm just gonna move this up to here. I'm gonna increase the length to about there. Looks, yeah, it looks like it's right on the edge. Okay, so that's fine. I'm going to delete these other trust members for now. And we'll just use the tab key to select that truss. And I'm just going to actually, before I do that, I'm just going to add a dimension here. So it's three foot. 
Um, these trusses are probably, I'm just looking at the photo, um, we're probably, let's just say it's about 12 feet between them. So let's go down here. One there. So you hit the multiple button. Twelve. And do one more. So let's see what we have here. It's probably a little bit bigger than it actually is. Well, it's not too bad. It's pretty close together. Probably a fair size. Oh, let's get video has a so now we have our truss in here the first thing we're going to do is we're going to edit the bottom core height cord, or middle cord height sorry so let's make that nine feet um, that's probably a bit high let's let's make that eight and let's go back to our image here for a second just look at this for scale. Yeah, eight's probably eight to nine is probably pretty fair. And I guess probably it's at eight and then the floor is a foot higher. So let's start. Let's start with that. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we want to import some of these um, structural members that they're using in here. Um, and then I guess actually the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select all these trusses. And um, let's select the truss only. And we're going to change the location of bearing as the bottom. And what that's going to do is it's going to raise it up so uh, you can see that that's flush there. Um, so it's really a little bit hard to tell in those images of what is actually on the bottom. Um, I'm going to assume that it's likely because those those steel members are um, round that we have some sort of uh, we have some sort of steel beam on the bottom core. So we're just going to select this W12 by 26 and then obviously puts this up a little bit higher. So what we might do is we're going to click edit work plane and we're going to pick a plane and we're going to pick the underside of this decking and what did we pick that for i'm going to hide this box and i'm going to hide this topo for now so we can see things a little better So we're attached to level one. So let's go to top. So top puts us that's probably not bad because if the steel is underside then you can have wood framing kind of on top. That's kind of one um, I guess methodology. We can also let's see what middle does. The middle puts that cord inside. Yeah, well, we don't really need that piece there. We don't need that piece there. And I think that's I think that's decent for now. We'll leave it like that. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we want to import this. Let's go back to that one photo we were looking at here. So we want to import this, which looks to be around a five inch steel column. And then the one going across looks to be about the same. And then there was one image with one in the interior as well. Yeah, so this one looks a little bit heavier in the middle here. Um, 
So we'll, this one probably looks to be like a 12, but I don't know if we'll set it to be that big. Um, maybe we'll just make that one a five as well. So the, what we want to do here is we want to go to structural um, columns. We want to load and we want to load in, um, go to our library here, go to structural columns. We want to load in steel. We want HSS round. So let's go to a five inch by five inch by a quarter. It's probably gonna be five inch by a half. Um, and let's, we'll, we'll pull in maybe another size here. Let's pull in a seven as well. Just to have another member in there. So now, and then we want to pull in one more, which is a beam. So let's go load. And we want to go to structural framing now. Uh, steel. It just says round. Let's pull in that same five by half and seven by half. All right. So now that we have all that in there, we're going to go back to our trust. We're going to go to edit. So our vertical webs are going to be HSS round. We'll make that, we'll make that closer to what is actually there. So let's make that by seven. Our diagonal webs, uh, we technically don't have any in here, but we can set that as five. And I guess ooh, the diagonal webs might be the one going across. Let's just see how that works. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's going on there. So let's, let's just add our top cord. So let's change our top cord to be the fives. And there we go. We have our truss. Um, I would not necessarily worry about these connections right now. Um, just, it's probably not necessary for the, the uh, design of, uh, or just for the, the drawing up, up of this. I think that's something that's a little bit more advanced that isn't ne necessarily crucial. Um, the last thing I just want to go over briefly is, um, we're going to go to elevation here. So level two. Let's make level two at nine. Um, so it's a little bit more reflective of what's going on. And if we want to actually see the column width, we can change the detail to fine. We can actually see the columns there. So by the looks of this image, it looks like the roof is just coming down below that column mark. So we're going to go to our level two floor plans. And one thing we're going to do here is, is we want to figure out where that floor needs to go. So I'm going to create and click RP on the keyboard and change this to hidden line for a second. And I'm just going to draw a reference plane right here. Uh, I intentionally drew it back a little bit because when you put a floor in, the floor is going to have a thickness and we wanted to hold it back a little bit from the edge there. Um, I guess the other way, maybe we'll do it a little bit of a different way. Actually, let's we'll move that right to that edge and then we'll copy this over to this side. Um, so now we have an idea of where that floor is. So let's go to architecture and we'll go to floors architecture. So let's, yeah, so we're going to use the same decking and floor, but you'd probably want to, you probably want a similar configuration of that, but we'll just leave it at that for now. And we're going to basically add a floor in here. And looking at our elevation now, so we have a floor in there. So the next thing I do is I'm just going to copy these reference lines out to the edge of that column. Like that. And then we're going to go back to level two again. And we're going to do our roof. So we'll do a roof. Um, I'm not going to be too fussy about the composition of the roof right now. I'm just going to quickly kind of get this in here. Um, and then let's just look back at the image for a second. I think there's, yeah, there's, so that's probably a six foot overhang on each side. So 
we're going to select this line there. That's six. We're going to turn off the defined slope in the middle there and make these. These are probably going to be like a, a 1612. I don't 100 percent know. And then we'll go to our north elevation again. Yeah, so it's even more than 1612. What is that? What is that? 3012. So or more than 3012. Uh, 3212. And then we're going to change our edge condition to be square. Uh, make this 20. Doesn't really matter. So now that that looks like that. So we our roof is pulled up quite a bit more than we want it uh, more than we want it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this line here. And we're going to move it over to that edge. And I'm just going to check to make sure this is symmetrical. That is symmetrical. Cool. We're going to go back to here and we're just going to pull out these. There. Go back to our elevation. And I think we're going to still have to bring it more. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw enough, another reference plane. Just using the tab key to cycle between selection of things. Okay, and we're going to pull this down. And we really want, hitting RP again on the keyboard, the edge to be here. So let's do this. We'll move it out even further to here. And then I'm just going to use the mirror command and mirror this onto the other side. And we're going to delete with this right here. Edit the roof again. Move that out, factor elevation, move this down. There we go, so our roof's kind of in the right place now. Let's go to our 3D and see what that looks like. Yeah, so we're kind of getting there. We, you know, kind of pulling this up side by side. A um, little bit of way to go, but, you know, it's starting to look somewhat similar.